Welcome back to Ponticetta Road, our YouTube channel for Ponticetta Brewing Company. I'm Trevor, this is my homie Caleb. Today, we're gonna to be doing one of our favorite segments, tasting videos. Yeah, so tasting videos where we get to drink beer. Surprise, surprise, we love that. Uh, we're gonna be talking about beer styles, talking about the flavor profile of our specific beers that we're trying, doing some market comparison and research for you know recipe development. Um, today, we're gonna to be trying a couple of our beers that were uh, barrel aged and um, will soon be coming to an online retail. And actually, our first beer we're gonna to try today isn't quite ready for package. So I'm gonna go pour us a couple of samples out of the fermenter. Be right back. While he's doing that, um, I mentioned online retailer. Well, we're gonna send this beer to Tavor. They're an online beer vendor who ships beer directly to your house. It's available in most states to be able to ship directly to you. Uh, unfortunately, the state of Texas prohibits breweries from sending beer to consumers directly or using delivery services in the state. Um, that's why we have a partner with other vendors uh, like Tavor. Um, we're able to export our beer to them in Washington State, and then they are gonna load it to their website and have it available for you. This order will be ready to go to them on February 9th, and it'll be available for you guys shortly thereafter. You'll be able to log on and buy both these barrel-aged beers and the hazy pale ale that he's about to bring us to taste. All right, check these out. So this is a beer we've done before in the past. Um, it's a beer named Pale Aura, actually named after one of my favorite bands, Periphery off of one of their EPs. Um, yeah, what you think? Man, that aroma is really kicking up right now. We uh, we just dry hopped this beer yesterday. Um, so it's pretty green. Yeah. Um, so what he means green is you can still taste the residuals from the hops, kind of get a little bit tingle in your throat from the hops. Yeah, yeah it almost presents like a drying sensation on your throat. It's vegetal matter from the hops themselves. Yeah still just sort of in suspension. Uh, I think super, super soft. Mm -hmm. um, some tropical notes and uh, not quite as like hop forward as one of our hazy IPAs, but still has that nice softness and balance and tropical aroma and flavor. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I'm getting like a bit of a woody note, almost like a pine or resin kind of thing going on there alongside that sort of sweet citrus thing. Yeah, for um, sure. Pretty common. This is a hop with citra and HBC 586. Uh, 586 is definitely one of my favorite hops. Um, kind of get a lime taste, a smell, aroma to it. And it's it's not quite as like dank and musty as some of the other hops that have been used. Um, it pairs very nice with, with the other hops that we use in this beer. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of see a uh, solid haze to it. Uh, that's me, it looks like it's pretty stable. And, yeah. And, and, and retain its haze. Every once in a while, you know, go get a beer that's labeled as a hazy and it maybe start out a little hazier than it is now. Uh, but uh, based on what I'm seeing right now and tasting flavor wise, I, I expect it to look just like this when it's packaged. Yeah. Uh, probably another couple of days and we'll uh, bring the, the beer down to temperature. It's about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll crash out all the uh, hops and yeast that's left over. And then we'll move it to one of our bright tanks, add carbonation and can it up and put it in the kegs. Yeah, be ready to package it next week. Yep, this one tastes pretty great. Cheers. Well, let's move on to the next one. All right, so uh, which one do you start with here? How about Rye Barrel Cast Black? Let's do Rye. So I just poured Rye Barrel Age Castle Black. Um, Castle Black is our Imperial Stout series that we release every Black Friday. Uh, so this actually came out um, this past year, Black Friday 2023. Um, it's uh, Imperial Stout, sort of an um, American Imperial Stout, a little bit more old school than the, the sweet uh, style that's pretty prevalent right now. Um, big. Starts at like 10 and a half percent usually going into barrels. Yeah, and uh, first thing that just comes to my mind is, you know, it's been packaged for what, two or three months now, and it just is boozier and more in depth and rich than when it first came out. Get that spice rye, you know, in there and just super smooth right now. Yeah, this actually spent nine months aging in Willet Rye Barrel. Um, we brewed this 
last spring, or last winter, I guess, really, uh, in 2023. Once it finished uh, fermentation, uh, went through all of our brewing process just like normal. Uh, we mentioned crashing, cooling down the beer on the previous beer. We actually do the same thing with this. We pull as much of that yeast and sediment out of the, pro out of the beer, and then we fill it in oak barrels. Uh, we have a cellar area in the back where we age these barrels and maintain, you know, as best we can, temperature and conditions so that the beer has as good a chance as any to come out tasting good. Wow. I think uh, when these first, both of these came out, I thought I liked the bourbon better. We'll see here in a minute when we open this bottle, but I think I'm switching back to rye. Last year, I liked the rye better. So. <clears throat> and it's one of those things, typically we would recommend drinking your beer fresh. As soon as you get a four pack of IPA, open it, drink it as fast as you can, keep it cold, all that stuff. Um, stout is a, sometimes a different story, especially when we're talking about aged beers. So uh, we picked up a lot of alcohol actually um, in the barrel uh, yeah. and it developed a lot of these like vanilla and um, spice flavors that would be expected uh, from a rye whiskey. Okay. Um, but I will say, just like Trevor, um, I found this uh, to be a little bit intense on day one. Um, and I feel like it's drinking more balanced now. And I think that that's truly explained by just a little bit of time in package. Yeah, and a lot of our customers, they'll buy these package, these package bottled beers, they'll buy one to drink like right now, and they'll leave one in their cellar, you know, whether that be their closet or basement or I don't know, under their bed so they forget that it's there. They'll leave it for a year or two or three. I mean, we've had people since we were open five years ago say, hey, I have this beer now. I'm gonna open it this year. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so we uh, here at the brewery actually stop and sell it each year, just a couple of bottles or a couple of cases, I should say, uh, so that we can go back and cross compare. Uh, so another fun video will be when we open up some of those cellar bottles. But uh, this is drinking really nice right now. It is, it is. Well, should we move on to the next one? Let's do it. All right. All right, so this is our 2023 Castle Black uh, bourbon barrel aged in wild turkey bourbon barrels. What you think, Caleb? Oh, wow. When we tasted these at release day, I actually found them to be a little more similar than I'm finding right now. That, that bourbon note comes through pretty strong right on, yeah. the, right on the front edge. The flavor is, is really coming out a lot more than when we first, when we first packaged them, for sure. I think it's as complex as the rye. I'm gonna be honest, right now I'm feeling it might be more complex. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I get almost like a mineral quality on the nose. Uh, not just straight bourbon, but I get like good bourbon. I get a little bit less of the milk chocolate, uh, dark chocolate, vanilla combo For sure. um, on the nose. But then as soon as I take a sip, first couple of uh, sniffs, it's almost like a, a bourbon cocktail. And then uh, as it's kind of sitting here warming up and and uh, airing out, it's it's sort of going away, but it's still there for sure. I kind of feel the same way about the flavor too. Yeah, I have to go back and try this one again. Another thing I noticed is uh, it seems like uh, the carb held up a lot longer, a lot better on the rye than on the bourbon, but still got a nice nice carb for a, a bottle bottle beer. Yeah, and, and barrel aged beer oftentimes has lower carbonation levels, anyways. Um, also, the stronger the beer, it, it is a little harder for the, the liquid to hold on to the dissolved carbon dioxide. And um, going back and forth on these, they're, they're different animals. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, that's why we do it, right? Every year we pick new barrels, different barrels, something we've never tried before. <clears throat> and uh, every year is a different beer. It's pretty fun to make. And the, the fans and the customers that have had this in the past few years, they always have cool notes to tell us about which ones Absolutely. are favorite. Yeah, I, I'm finding right now the bourbon barrel aged beer, I get a lot of like rich, uh, medium like caramel. It comes through more obviously than 
And yeah. the rye barrel. The rye barrel, I get more of those dark chocolate and vanilla hits, right. um, which is wild because it's the same base recipe. The yeah. beer, the liquid starting out is always exactly the same. Right. Um, you know, and then it goes into the barrel and that's where we see these changes and deviations. We fill multiple barrels typically and sometimes we'll taste and select certain barrels for different applications, but um, this has been pretty consistent for us. Um, I think it's our first year ever filling wild turkey barrels. Yep. Um, you know, the spirit makes a difference. We've done Heaven Hill, we've done Jim Beam, which yep. is, you know, one I, I kind of didn't expect to love as much, but it turned yeah. out nicely too. Yeah. Um, wild turkey reminds me of some stuff like, like I, I, my dad used to make wild turkey and Coke. Oh, and, yeah. uh, so that kind of takes me back for a second. I was gonna say college days, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like you said, this one seems a little more dry and that bourbon characteristic, characteristic this one is definitely more uh, rich and robust dark chocolate. So if you had to pick one, which one's your favorite right now? My favorite's Rye. Um, I think in the, when we first released these in, in November, I said bourbon. I think I'm switching over to Rye, which like I said earlier, was my choice last year. Yeah, I, I expected to pick Rye right away, um, but I definitely had to think through that. Um, the bourbon has a nice complexity. Yeah. Um, the, that I didn't find in the same amount in the rye, but right. still, if, I, if I'm gonna sit down, have a nightcap beer, which is how I think of Imperial Stout, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that vanilla note and a little bit of rye spice in the background. Oh yeah, for sure. But I don't think you make a wrong answer here. No, I, I agree to that. So we can get these on Tavor coming up pretty soon, right? Absolutely. You can click the link below and set up your account today so you're ready. Because Tavor is only gonna have a limited amount of these beers and they're gonna go pretty fast. Let us know in the comments when you do get yours from Tavor. We'd love to know if you're team rye or team bourbon. We also wanna know what's your favorite barrel-aged beer that you've ever had. Let us know and then don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.